Grade 6 Math, number 13.3b, Volume of Prisms, Part 2, Missing Measures. So we were talking about prisms in the last video and how it's a solid figure that has two same size, same polygon shaped bases and the other faces that are all rectangles or squares. And the two bases are identical. And we looked at these drawings. The bases connect to join the lateral faces. Here's the bases, base 1 and base 2, or it could be these, or it could even be these fat parts right here. It could be laying on its side like this. That could be base 1 and base 2. For a triangular prism, we use the two triangles as base 1 and base 2, and each one of these rectangles is a lateral face. And wherever they meet is an edge, okay? Wherever a base meets a lateral face, it's called an edge, all right? So if you remember from the last video, volume is the number of cubic units needed to fill or occupy a given space without gaps or overlaps. And it's measured in cubic units, feet, centimeters, cubic inches, etc. And we used square units for flat surfaces, or units squared, and we used a little two exponent, which meant the two measures, length and width, one, two. And for solid figures, we use three dimensions, length, width, height. So we use a tiny three exponent to show the three measures, length, width, height. And we call them cubed or cube units. Okay? So if we know that across here is two inches and it's seven inches long, but we don't know how tall it is, but we know the volume is 84 inches cubed, we need to solve for x what do we do? Well, we can find the value of x by working backwards. If we know the volume is 84 inches cubed, that's where we start. We put that in place of the v in the formula. So remember the formula was vbh, v equals bh for volume. So here's the v, all right? That's the v part of the formula. And we need to do the base and the height. Well, we know the base is 2 times 7, which is 14, but we don't know the height, x. So what we do is we put the 14 and x right next to each other. That means multiply in algebra. And we divide both sides of the equal sign by the 14. What happens is it turns this 14 over 14 into a 1, a 1x. One and we don't put the 1 there. We just know that if there's an x, that it's 1x, right? And then 84 divided by 14... What is that? Well, I did a little multiplication on the side. 14 times 5 is 70. 14 times 6 is 84. And because multiplication is the inverse of division, I know that this now makes this a 6. Okay? It's, it was just easier to multiply to find the 6 than it was to do it this way. Okay? So I know that this is 6. And now that this is gone, I know that 6 is equal to x, and I've solved for x. I've isolated the x to one side of the equal sign. I know x is 6 inches, okay? Okay, what if we have a triangular prism and we're missing the height? Same thing. We plug in the formula. V equals BH, okay? So we have to find the base first. And we know that it's 4 inches this way and 5 I'm sorry, 4 centimeters this way and 5 centimeters this way, but we don't know the height. So in place of the V in the formula, we put the 30. So we're going to find the area first, right? And you know the area for a triangle? Area equals half base height, okay? So we're going to do that first. Half times the base times the height, well, this is 5 times 4. Half of 5 times 4, which is 20, is a 10. So now we know that the base is 10. So it's 10 times x, see, because we don't know the h. x is taking the place of the h in the formula. So it's almost like it would look like this. Volume equals bx, okay? Because we don't know what the h is, the x is taking its place, okay? And I could have used an h there, all right? So we're using x in its place. It still makes it the same thing. It's just a variable, and we know what variables are, right? They're alphabets that just take the place of a number that we don't know what it is. It's just taking the number's place until we find out what the number is. All right, so it doesn't matter if it's an x or an h. So now that we know that this bottom layer is 10 cubic units, we need to find out how tall it is that it would give us 30. Well, this is kind of an easy one, because we know 10 times 3 is 30, right? 
we divide both sides by 10, and that eliminates the 10 over 10. It makes it become a 1, all right? 30 over 10 is 3. We know that 3 is x. And because we're dealing in centimeters, we know that it's 3 centimeters. So x is equal to 3 centimeters, okay? We divide it, and we've isolated the x to one side of the equal sign. See? Inverse operations. So remember, in a prism, there's two identical bases, and any two opposite identical sides can be the bases of a prism. In a triangular prism, it's best to do the triangles, okay? Now, you're going to be coming across hexagonal prisms, which are hexagons on the top of bottom, pentagonal prisms with pentagons on the top of bottom, and all different types of prisms. So just remember, use those polygons as the bases, base 1 and base 2, and keep your rectangles or squares as your lateral faces, okay? Now here's one last thing. For the volume of a cube, we use S with the little 3 for the third power here. So it's S to the third power, and what that means is side times side times side. Because it's a cube and it's all the same size all the way around, what we do is we just multiply the base layer, 5 times 5, which is 25, and we need to multiply it by 5 high, right? Because just like the other ones that we did in the last video, this one has got along its base 25 of them, okay? And we need to make them 5 high, okay? There's 5 layers high. So we do the 25 inches for the first layer, and then we multiply it by 5, which is how high it is, and we get 125 inches cubed, or 125 cubic inches, okay? So just remember, volume of a cube is s to the third power. It's side times side times side, okay? It's like lateral face times lateral face times lateral face, all right? I'll see you in the next video. We've only got a couple more videos to go, and we're finished with sixth grade. Isn't that kind of exciting? All right, I'll see you there. Bye.